Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor at your service to talk about long Yagi antennas. In a video not long ago, a couple days ago, around the middle of June 2014, I made a couple of videos about Yagi antennas. In one, I specifically outlined uh, general engineering dimensions for a three-element Yagi antenna and this is basically what a three-element Yagi antenna looks like. A half-wave center-fed dipole to the radio with a shorter parasitic element in front of it called the director. By in front I mean in the direction of maximum radiation and response compared to the driven element and a reflector slightly longer than the driven element and parallel to it behind it. R stands for reflector, DE stands for driven element, and D stands for director. They call that a driven element because you drive the radio frequency energy right into it directly. The parasitic elements, on the other hand, aren't connected physically to anything. They are electromagnetically coupled to the driven element in such a way because of their length and positioning to create directivity and sometimes you can get around six or even seven decibels of gain with respect to a dipole in a well-designed three element Yagi. But you can add more directors in front of this uh, original director right here to get even more gain yet. This, by the way, this horizontal uh, thing right here is called the boom. And it is a mechanical support for the antenna elements. The boom is usually made of metal in commercially manufactured Yagis. And the driven elements run through holes in that metal separated by insulators. You do not generally want to connect these, um, the parasitic or the driven element to the boom. The boom is just there as a structural support. But you can extend that boom, make it much longer. And this is done particularly on the higher frequencies, uh, 144, uh, 220, and 432 megahertz bands sometimes even on the 50 megahertz band. You can add more directors and these additional directors are each progressively just a little shorter than the one behind it. And they converge towards a minimum length so that if you were to connect the ends of all of these elements with say string you would get curves which converge towards a certain minimum distance from the boom. You uh, will call these elements here director 1, director 2, director 3, director 4, and so on, out to in some cases director 8, 9, 10, maybe even 12. I think I've seen 12 or even 14 element Yagi antennas for 144 megahertz, 220 megahertz, and 432 megahertz. As you increase the number of directors, you increase the gain, but the gain, you get only a little bit of gain each time you add a director, and as you continue to add them, you reach a point of diminishing returns where adding more still wouldn't really give you any benefit. But you can see that this type of an antenna is going to indeed be long. This is going to be a long boom. The driven element right there. Sometimes you might see an antenna with another reflector behind the main reflector, but rarely. And you'll almost never see a Yagi with more than two reflectors. But you may see a Yagi with 10 or 11 directors. And it hasn't been unknown for an antenna like this to produce as much as 10 decibels with respect to a dipole of gain. 
That means, for example, if you feed 100 watts into an antenna like this, you might get 1,000 watts of effective radiated power in the favored direction of the antenna, which is, in this case, towards the right or from the right in the case of reception. And the more you add elements, the sharper this main lobe will get and the less energy will be radiated or received in other directions. Remember, when you have an antenna and you get gain in any antenna like this, a directional array, you always end up also having directivity. Meaning that you take and add energy in one direction at the expense of other directions. There are other specifications for Yagi antennas and similar directional arrays besides simply the gain. They also have what they call the front to back ratio and the front to side ratio. And you can probably guess from what those um, terms say what they are, but I will do uh, eventually some videos that explain what front to back and front to side ratios mean. They are generally expressed in decibels and you can uh, get a front to back or front to side ratio of more than 20 decibels if you have an antenna with 10 dBd of forward power gain. So that's basically the the way a long Yagi antenna works. Obviously for the lower bands, uh, 14, 21, 28 megahertz down in there and even 7 or 10 megahertz, a long Yagi is not practical. The boom would be hundreds of feet long and it would be impossible to attach it to a tower and rotate it. Mechanically it would simply be impossible. But on these bands here, the VHF and UHF bands, you will see these things and you've probably seen a few of them by the side of the road uh, uh, for UHF uh, links uh, you know, that have to do with the government uh, radio installations. <clears throat> you'll see a little tower by the side of the freeway and you'll see a long Yagi pointed in some specific direction and sometimes you'll even see these antennas pointed up at the sky indicating that they are for satellite communications use. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, signing off for now, saying 73 and so long.